This is the Austerlitz French Mirror scenario. For the details, check out the description below. In the dark, foggy twilight, the armies begin moving towards each other. Cavalry screens to the fore, both sides uncertain of the disposition of the enemy. Bagration's hussars glimpse the French line north of Kobolnitz. Dokhtarov's hussars proceed cautiously up Dolmets Road. On the French side of the Olmos Road, Marat's cavalry advances up in column and shakes out into line. Lechtenstein's cavalry moves forward. Napoleon's orders were to find the Allied army and hold them down. Fulf's dragoons contact Dokhtarov's hussars. Kolray's 4th Corps advances forward. His hussars contact Lenay's hussars. Fulf's dragoons ambush and destroy Dokhtarov's hussars. Kolray's hussars drive back Lenay's hussars. Marat's cavalry surges forward, looking for the Allied army. Constantin's guards charge the French line. Colray's 4th Corps charges north of Sokolnitz. Bagration charges the artillery emplacement on the hill. Hearing the cannon fire, Bernadotte's 1st Corps deploys south. On the north side of the Pratzen, Dokhtarov deploys. Lenay falls back from the Russian assault. Davout enters and sends his dragoons to support Lenay's hussars. Sult's 4th Corps continues a wide flanking maneuver, trying not to become entangled in Murat's cavalry. The sudden arrival of the dragoons scares off the Austrian hussars. Giving better than they got, Lenay's troops north of Sokolnitz fall back, but Colrath has captured the town. It's been morning, and the French have yet to bring the full weight of their army to bear on the Allied army. Bessier's guard approaches the Goldbach. Solt's 4th Corps sets up and prepares for his attack on the Allied right flank. Davu steadies a line on the French right flank. Marat's cavalry poises for another attack. Constantin and Bagration expand the center advance. Kolrath occupies Sokolnitz but does not attack further. Bagration's assault on the artillery fails. Bernadette's First Corps holds in front of the Russian guard. It's late morning, and the last of the fog still stubbornly holds. Soult's Fourth Corps comes alive. Lenay's Fifth Corps artillery continues to play havoc on Bagration's advance. The Russian guards come to the aid. Bagration's stalled assault. Marat sends the French cuirassiers against the Austrian cuirassiers. The Austrian cuirassiers fall back, and not and Dr. Oz artillery opens up point blank on the cuirassiers to no effect. Napoleon urges Bernadotte to drive forward. Advance guard deploys bags and Bagration's beleaguered troops recover. Colerith prepares his assault, waiting for the fog to burn off. Lenay's artillery continues to stymie the Allied army as even the guard grenadiers cannot defeat them. Bernadotte's assault falls back from the lifeguards. Soult's assault here on the French left is costly and little is gained. The noon bells are tolling in Austerlitz. The fog clears. After lunch, Colerae's 4th Corps explodes alive, opens up on Friant's division with the artillery, and then the assault begins. Friant's division of Davout's Corps gives ground grudgingly and makes them pay. With heavy losses on all sides, Bernadotte is driven from the citadel. The guards' cuirassiers drive back Liechtenstein's cavalry. Marat's cuirassiers pay a heavy price to drive the Russian guns from the top of the hill. It's mid-afternoon, and this time Napoleon's one quick blow didn't seem to work. But it's not over yet. Fourth Corps resumes the drive on the Allied right flank. Constantin's guards' artillery opens up and drives off the French guard. Bernadotte's first car falls back. Guard artillery drives back the lifeguard into the guard cuirassiers. Dokhtarov pulls back his line. Marat's cuirassiers drive hard in the center. Migration drives on in the south. Lene hopes the heroic 5th Cavalry Corps artillery can continue to shine. Lichtenstein's 5th Cavalry Corps falls back from the cuirassier assault. Again, 5th Corps artillery holds out. They are pushed out of the town, but they are still there, and they did cause casualties. Intense fighting in the fortified town of Bosevitz leaves no one in control. It's dinner time, and the issue still seems undecided. It could go either way at this point. Although in the south, the French hussars fall apart against their Austrian counterparts. 
Abundant props in Dr. Oz holds. The deadly guard's artillery continues to hammer the French guard. The French left Napoleon calls off the assault. His army is sundered. Half here, half here. He will not force a decision by nightfall. But unperturbed and valiant, Murat continues with his assault. Lene's artillery continues to shell, driving back and disordering the French infantry. Lene's infantry finishes the job. French guard comes to Revald's assistance. Late in the day, the fighting intensifies around Davout and Lene. Can they hold off Colwraith and the advance guard? Lene's chasing infantry is driven off, but not before destroying another Russian division. And finally, Lene's heroic artillery fires their last shot from their last gun as the Russian troops overrun them. Russian advance guard dragoons drive on Davout's hussars. Murat makes a cut costly attack, which is driven back at great expense. And finally, the last of Ber Bernadette's infantry is destroyed by the grenadiers, but Napoleon's Imperial Guard drives them off at great cost. The sun is setting and there's maybe time for one final drive. There's nothing to be won or lost in that short a time on this part of the battlefield. Napoleon is essentially lost by, by virtue of not defeating the new model Allied army. But can the rest of his troops hold off from a grievous loss? On this last turn, Napoleon concedes defeat because any way you cut it, he's gonna pull off two of his biggest train blocks are gonna retreat off the board, off the map, out of the battle. He's leaving. The French new model has won. If you look at actual losses, the Allied Army has lost almost twice as many infantry divisions as the French, although two of the Allied divisions are simply militia. The Allies did lose some artillery and some Hussar cavalry. The French lost a couple detachments, some artillery the same, some Hussars, and in addition, Davout's Dragoons. So I'd say at this point, the losses are actually pretty equivalent. The French were forced to withdraw. Good game.